inventories in games are so different than what I expected. Let me explain. I've been working on a survival game prototype to later on maybe use as a template to build up my first bigger game. More on that in a future video. Since in survival games the inventory is an extremely important component, I obviously decided to start with that. And as a very naive beginner in the game dev space, I thought that one week should be way more than enough to make a semi-fleshed out inventory. I couldn't have been more wrong. Before I joined the game development space, I thought inventories in games worked similar to real life. Except that in order to fit everything in your bag or pocket, it was shrunk down to a tiny size. But the 3D item was still there. Somewhere on your character. Well, in reality, it's completely different. And to figure all this stuff out, it took me four weeks of hitting my head against the wall to finally end up with something I'm proud of. And let me tell you, you wouldn't believe the things I had to do to make this shit work. You know the seemingly simple stuff, like moving an item around in your inventory? Well, it's not as seemingly simple. And I've done a fair bit of research into this, but I'm pretty sure there are loads of better ways to do this. So if you know how to make this any better and simpler, let me know in the comments. Even though inventories have a huge importance in games, the good inventories are often going unnoticed. Like, did you ever stop and said, Man, this game has such a dope inventory. Probably not. However, bad inventories instantly get called out. For example, Skyrim's inventory has been heavily criticized because of its non-user friendliness. You can't organize it, it's hard to find stuff, and overall just feels frustrating to use. And on the other side of the good and bad inventory spectrum, we have inventories like Minecraft's inventory. That not only suits the game perfectly, but gives you a lot of freedom that you probably didn't even notice you had. You can move items around and put them wherever you want. You can split stacks, you can recombine stacks, and overall you can organize your inventory the exact way you want. And this freedom that you probably didn't even notice you had plays a pretty big role in making Minecraft such a good game. In Minecraft, freedom is key. You are free to do whatever you want in the world or in your inventory. And to my big surprise, making an inventory like that isn't easy. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would... So let's find out how inventories work. Well, at its core, it's as simple as making an array. For those that don't know what an array is, an array is simply a sort of folder with slots in it that store names, numbers, location, or something of the sorts. By default, it stores it in the order they are being added to this folder. This folder can grow and shrink depending on how many items you add to it. So let's say you pick up an apple. This apple gets transformed into a note with the name apple on it. However, by itself, that note can't do anything. So you also need a list of all the items in your game. To this list, you will want to add the name of the item followed by every information important to that item. And now when you select the apple from the array, it will look up the name apple on the list and will act upon the properties tied to that apple. Like for example, show a 2D picture of that item in your inventory UI. And this sounds pretty great. However, there is a problem with this method. The array can only store one piece of flexible information per slot. Meaning that if you want to stack multiple items in a single slot, you'd also need to store a number with that specific slot. So how would you go about that? Well, there's a thing called a map. It's basically another sort of folder, very similar to an array, but with very distinct differences, like the ability to store two pieces of information per slot. So you can make it store a name, but also a number in the same slot, which obviously will be the item name and the item amount that you possess of that said item. So, problem solved, right? Well, not exactly. The flaw with maps that at least I couldn't solve is that you can't have two slots with the same name. 
So you either allow the player to carry an infinite amount of apples in a single slot, or you make it so that after a certain amount, he simply cannot pick up any more apples. One way to limit this is by introducing a weight system like in Skyrim, where every item has a weight, and if you carry too many items, your character simply cannot move. However, this only works in an inventory system where you don't have a grid system like in Minecraft, because there is no smart way of moving or splitting the stacks throughout the inventory since that's simply not how maps work. So, what's my solution? Well, my way around this is by combining an array with a map. Something I haven't told you yet is that an array might only store one piece of information, but it actually gives out two pieces of information. The item name you stored, but also the slot number that the item is stored at. This is called an index. I then take the index of that slot, store this index in my map, and finally I assign a number corresponding to the item amount to that index in my map. This is pretty confusing, I know. Anyways, so now my inventory looks up the array that stores the names of my items and gives me the slot number, otherwise called the index. And with that slot number, it checks the map to see how many items are stored in that slot. And this works quite well because we can now have multiple stacks of the same item, but we still have one problem, and that is, since the array only is as long as it needs to be, we cannot move any items to an empty slot since that slot doesn't exist as long as there is no item in it. And the really weird way I solve this is by creating an item called empty, which is non-stackable, it doesn't have any properties and simply is invisible. I then add as many of these empty items as the player has inventory space and now when I add or move an item in my inventory it either replaces that empty item or simply swaps position with it. As you can see on my screen, these empty items show up as white cubes to visualize what's happening. So, did you know all this? Because I for one am pretty surprised that all this works that way. Anyways, I wish you all the best, see you next time, peace.